Hey, in this lesson, we're going to learn how to animate a 3D object. But first, see how to arrange things properly. So here we have this tool and we are going to see how we have it arranged. First, we have a tarus, which joins all four legs. We have the seed, which is the top cylinder, this one here. We also have a clo cloner, which allowed me to replicate the legs in a radial disposition. See? That's it. This object is repeated in a radial disposition. It's important to have in this way so that we can create the first animation. Okay. You can increase or decrease the radius of the cloner to modify the spacing of the legs. Guys, let's begin with the animation. First of all, we need to have a main null so that we can move the entire tool. This is, we need to group all the objects. So, create a new null, which will appear at the bottom of this tool. And let's change the display to cycle. That's it. See? Now you can see a cycle, but we also need to change the orientation to XZ. Now select the tool, this tool and parent it to this new null. Then rename it to base. Now using this null called base, we can move the entire tool. This is very important to rotate and animate our stool in general. We'll be animating first the legs, which is the cloner part. So you need to go now to MoGraph and then click on Effector and Plane. Okay. You'll see that as soon as you created the plane, the legs turned invisible. So, select the plane and go to the position attributes. Change the y-axis to zero. The legs are back, see? Now we are going to parent this plane to the null. So, uncheck the position box. That's it. And having the plane selected, go to the former tab. Then change the deformation to object. After that, go to the file of tab and change the shape option to linear. So, guys, what happened? you'll see a kind of an arrow on the right side, which corresponds to the orientation. On the left side, we have another boundary. This means that whatever is on the right side is being affected, while everything that is before the part is not being affected. Let's see this with an example very easy. Select the plane and go to parameter tab. Check the scale box, then the uniform scale box and change the scale to minus one. So in this case, the plane is not affecting anything, but as soon as we move it to the right, the stool will begin to scale. See? So what are we going to do now? Okay, what we are going to do is move the plane so that the scale of the stool changes. And this will be our first animation. So reduce the scale of the plane and then move it. Okay, place it here. Now we are going to use the timeline. Select the plane and then click this button to create a keyframe which is this square that you can see here. 
in blue, that one. And uh, now advance to the frame 20 and move the planes to the left side until the scale of the stool is back to normal. Create a keyframe again. If you move across the timeline, you'll see that we have animated our plane and the scale of this tool is changing. Great. So, this would be the base of an animation with a plane in which we change the scale of an object. We are going to tweak the movement of this plane, so move it here there, perfect. And just before the animation begins, create a keyframe. Then go to the frame 20 and move the plane here. Perfect. Now the scaling is a bit slower. So you've seen a way to animate the scaling of an object. But remember guys, that they must be in this order. We need to have all the objects within the null. And the plane must be inside the null too. Knowing all this, let's now turn off the plane so we no longer see it. What are we going to do now? Well, we are going to animate the null to create a little jump just when this tool gets scaled up. And how are, are we going to do this? Select the null and go to the coordinate tab. I'll show you another way to animate and for that we are going to use the coordinates. So this Animation will go backwards, that is, from the frame 30 to the frame 0. The previous one ends on the frame 20. So go there, as we need to change the coordinates on the y-axis, click on the button next to it. This way, we have created a keyframe only for the position on the y-axis. Now go to the frame zero and increase the position on the Y axis to 10 centimeters. Then click again the button next to it. Now we have another keyframe only for the position because it's the only one we need. Okay, let's do the same with the rotation. Let's see on which axis we need to rotate. Mm, this one, okay. So click on the button next to this rotation value, then go to the frame zero and change the value. You'll notice that this tool is invisible, but the axis is being rotated nonetheless. That means that the animation is being created. Perfect. Then press play and watch the animation. Now, as soon as this tool stops rotating, we are going to create a little bounce back. So, rotate this tool to this side, click the button again, advance a couple of frames and set the rotation back to zero. Good. We are going to drag our rotation keyframes a bit, so select the null, go here, right click and go to animation show track. In this window you'll see the keyframes for the null. So you can see we have some rotation keyframes and some position keyframes. So we have rotation and position and we are going to move a little bit the part of the rotation Okay, perfect. To see how the animation looks. The bounce back is still not smooth enough, so drag these keyframes a, lit, a little bit. Also reduce the rotation in the middle of keyframe. 
good. This bounce back makes the animation look much better, right? So, I think we can leave this tool like this, but we could use a bit more of rotation to improve the animation. So, select the null and go to the frame 23. We are going to rotate this tool on this axis. Create a keyframe here. Go back to the frame 0 and change the rotation. And now we have the animation for this tool. So guys, let me do a quick summary of this. We have the main null that contains all the objects of this tool. Inside, we have a cloner that replicates the legs of this tool in a radial disposition. We also have a torus, which is the joint for the four legs. We have the seat part on the top. We also have a plane that we created from the MoGraph menu. And we animated the position of this plane. We also changed its deformation to object and the fall off shape to linear. Also, we decided that it will only affect the scale. For that, we checked the uniform scale box and entered a value of minus 1. Lastly, we animated the main null so that it looks better. For that, we animated the position on the y-axis. We have also animated the rotation position and also we created a little bounce back. Perfect. So guys, these are the basic principles of animation for an object like this. In the next video, we're going to see the curves and the animation with curves. So see you. Bye guys.